Barton FM, following Barton Town. Sport on Barton FM is sponsored by Easy Buy. Welcome to Swans Talk with me, Richard Watts. I'm joined by uh, Aaron Walton and uh, it's been a good week with two wins. Eccles Hill on Saturday and then uh, Goul on Tuesday. Yeah, two good wins. Um, <clears throat> the win against Eccles Hill was good. I mean, obviously, Eccles Hill, I think, uh, probably one of the sort of fancied sides, aren't they, after last season, finishing yeah. runners-up and going into a playoff. Uh, to be fair, they had they had key players missing. However, so did Barton, didn't they? they certainly did. Nathan Hottie, Tom Warby, Ben Hinchliffe, huge <laughs> misses at those, aren't they? They certainly was down the spine of the team there. Uh, but the lads, the lads who were playing, really stepped up, and uh, you've got that gladiatorial defence we always go on about with. Um, yeah. Josh Lacey, Scott Matthews and uh, Taz Hare. Absolute colossuses at the back, aren't they? Yeah. And Tom Davies fitting in nicely when he comes alongside them as well. Absolutely. I forgot Tom. I forgot Tom as well. He'll he'll crucify me for that. But yes, Tom Davies played really well yet again. Um, but, um, good game. Played yeah, I thought, well. I thought Danny Trott did well up front. Yeah, he did. Uh, Plowing alone, follow a follow up the front. He certainly got himself about and scored a nice goal. Was always causing a little bit of trouble when he was uh, when he was up there. There was a bit weary of him, so yeah. definitely really good. He got man of the match as well, didn't you, Richard? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, for those who don't know, the man of the match is not chosen by uh, us. It's or the manager. It's chosen by the the uh, match sponsors. So sometimes it goes to their favourites. But today, uh, but on Saturday, it went to the man who did actually play very well. Yeah, yeah. And Henry Cook's getting through a good shift in midfield. He puts himself about. I was just thinking today, that's that's probably maybe one of Jarmo's best signings so far, I think. And obviously, we haven't seen Nathan Hotty play because he's been mm. injured. Mm. And, and he, he's like a Rolls-Royce engine in that midfield. However, yeah. Henry Cook, we, it was a little bit of an unknown there. Uh, but why he's he's a different player to Josh Baker. However, he's got he's got his positives. He's tenacious. He's like a little Jack Russell in that in that midfield, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Um, you know, ferreting out, getting the ball, going into tackles, and, and then even sometimes having a little look up and passing. So I thought on I'm not going on to Tuesday too too quickly, but Tuesday I thought he played uh, quite well with Jack Tanser, the pair of them. Yeah, they they did. Played, I thought they played really well. Um, but going back to uh, Saturday's game against Eccles Hill, I don't think they really were in the game, were they? No, I mean, I thought second half, I thought Barton very good in the first half and then just saw the game out in the second half and weren't really, there was only yeah. really one very good save that uh, Charlie Dixon had to make in the first half. But after that, it yeah. was fairly plain sailing, yeah. really. It was, yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't an Eccles Hill team. I thought, I thought we'd see. I thought they'd have a little bit more, more about them. They are one of our favourite teams in that league, aren't they, Richard? Mm. Because they're a good footballing team. They've got some yeah. very good players. But everybody has an off day, don't they? And and I, I presume that was an off day. Although, although our arch enemy and nemesis, North Ferriby, went and beat them, didn't they, on Tuesday night with a last minute Tanik Fishley goal? Yes, so, they did. 3-2, so 3-2, so Eccles Hill struggling a little bit just to find their feet with a new manager because they have um, Lee Elam and Asi Bassein, they both went, they were manager and assistant manager, they both went, so they've got the new man, uh, I can't quite remember his name, so they're just obviously trying to find their way with this new new manager, but uh, go back to Bart, it's about Bart, and I thought they played really well and it was a, it was a very professional performance. And then we go a Tuesday night, a, t- a terrific result. Tom yes. will be back, but no yeah, Ben Hinchcliffe Wood. again. No Ben Hinchcliffe still on his Burnley fortnight. Um, I think somebody else is on a Burnley fortnight at the weekend, uh, Mr Tom Davey. What's up with these footballers getting the holidays? Mind you, Tom is a school teacher and he's, got, he's only got a small uh, window of opportunity to get his holidays in. Very true. So. So I, I know how he feels there, difficult. But I get my holidays in June, mind you. That's that's just me. 
<laughs> but, but, but uh, ghoul away at the Victoria Pleasure Grounds. There's nothing pleasurable about going to that ground because they're very partisan, that crowd. They, yeah. will, they really are, um, uh, should we say, they don't leave anything behind, do they? The, um, the, the crowd and the, and I think uh, Mike Carmody, the manager, he's got, he's got a good team there as well at Hill. They are a good team. They're going to be hard to beat this season. Um, yeah. But I thought I thought Barton just shot, uh, played really well, and the two old masters. That's right. Goal, it they? just shows, doesn't it? That both of them can still, despite the age, can still do a job at this level. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. As as um, you, class never leaves you, and they yeah. both got it in. They both got it in abundance. Uh, I thought the first goal from uh, Danny North was a lovely, well-worked move. Just a little bit of a mistake by the defender letting it come across him. He could have cut that out. Tom Warby got it down the wing, flashed it across. Um, Danny North just gets across it quick, gets the ball across, and and keepers can't save them when they flash across the bodies like that, can they? And uh, one nil it was. And then they seem to really not be in a great deal of trouble, although um, uh, Gould were pretty quick on the counter and they looked quick with Williams. Um, who else was... Uh, 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 Sam Cable, of course, excelled. Right. He, uh, he's always a handful. And I like, and I know you like, we like Ollie Russell, don't we? Yeah. From Gould. Yeah. He, yeah. Really good player. He, I, I thought he, he did really well, Ollie Russell, ex Albion sport, of course. Uh, they looked dangerous, and of course, they had that near goal, didn't they? Where um, Ollie Russell just beat um, uh, Charlie Dixon to the ball, didn't he? Headed it over him, and then uh, I think Williams headed, he- headed it as well, and it, it sort of hit the bar, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. Then, that's probably and then, nice. I think the re- Williams then got in the way. Yeah, and, yeah, and pleased he did us. actually. And then the, then the referee blew for a free kick because uh, one of the gladiators, Josh Lacey, got a push in the back, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And then we can go into the second half. Obviously, Gould come out, all guns blazing, a crowd behind them. They get a penalty, cast iron penalty, no no problems there. Wasn't it? Uh, Charlie Dixon just come out, just caught him. Um, and upset Sam Cable, doesn't miss them. One all, game on. And uh, Barton just kept going for it, didn't they? Yeah, did. And Great they brought by the manager. Yeah, they brought Mr. Jarman on. I think he fancied it, didn't he? He was uh, he was taking a lot of flack from the the Gooligans. Yeah, and uh, he, he came on, um, and it just <laughs> it just shows you. He, he looked for that. He just made that little bit of room. Bang, bang, bang. Curl, curled it round. I've seen the video, and it looks the keeper. It looks a, a bit of a soft one. It just goes in off his hands. However, from behind the goal. He looks a bit unsighted, the keeper. So even better from Nathan Jarman. Yeah, yeah. And then there was and then, a big um, Charlie Dixon save when they broke through. Absolutely, yeah. Co- uh, covered himself well, smothered it well. Yeah, really good save. Um, the defence were playing well because they were catching them offside all the time as well. Yeah. So that's, and that to me, that shows, uh, well, one, the linesman's actually up with play, but also they've got a, They've they've got some good telepathy between between the defenders. I think they know what they're doing. Yeah. Mind you, mind you, on another day with a different linesman, it could be a mile offside, and they'll say, "Oh, he's onside." Yeah. Um, uh, another little thing I want to talk about, Richard, quickly is the Tom Davy booking, um, where oh, he, he he went off because the. The physio came on, or the trainer, or whatever we call them, with the magic sponge. He went off. Um, now, Tom's a very experienced player, so he's obviously asked the line or the, as, well, as I call him, assistant flag waver, uh, can he go back on? And he's obviously said yes to him. Yeah. And then the referee blows up and, and, and books him, cautions him, because he, he's not giving permission, which is fair enough. You know, you do need a permission off the referee. Mm. But if the line said that, you're going to go on, aren't you? Yeah. So a bit, a bit of a calamity. And then then obviously the referee <coughs> goes across and, and speaks to the linesman. And the linesman's saying, shaking his head. We saw him shaking his head saying, oh, no, I didn't say anything. But I'm sure you did. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure. Did. He must have done. He must have he done. Must... I can't believe he would go back on the field without... No. 
No, not not. Quick. All right, Landsman. Yes, on you go. Yeah, definitely overstepped his authority somewhat. One thinks. <laughs> <laughs> you're, here, you're here just to give ins and outs and offsides. Not well, that's true. Done. <laughs> so obviously got a rollicking at half time, and uh, he wasn't allowed his cup of tea. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. yeah. So what we we third in the league. I know it's only early days, but it's certainly a better start than last season. And the team that and Barton are looking good. Yet we go on Saturday to the boys from Muglet Lane, Maltby Main. Yeah. That's going to be a tough one, Richard, because I don't know. You've been, haven't you? You know what yeah. the pitch is like. It's, it's a place uh, to play. It is. It's obviously, if, if you've not been before, it's got a stand down one side, open ends. And then at the other side, it's open. It's got a cricket pitch. Uh, or cricket field, so it's the um, best, the best looking floodlights in the league, but they're not very strong. Um, <laughs> but um, and a little clubhouse at one side. It's yeah. it's it's quite a difficult place to go play football. Um, they've had a few changes in management this this year already from January. And this is I think this is the third or fourth manager they've had. They've got um, Andy Dawson and Lee Whitehead from Parkgate, who've always produced good teams, mm. and obviously. When management goes to another club, what happens, Richard? They take the players, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. So they've so they've taken. Obviously, they've taken Will Wraith, Tom Armand, uh, Brandon uh, Bagley, who's, who he's a good player. Uh, Jordan Graves. They've also got James Stafford, ex Emily and Peniston, so he'll be no mug. Mm-hmm. And of course, they've got the nemesis of the Swans, Ross Duggan. Oh. Ra- rainy day in Mansfield. Can you yes. remember that? He had a great game, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he had three touches, three goals. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's a brute. He's a brute of a centre forward. He's. I would say he's on the mould of um, who was the big guy who used to play for Old City? Feed the beast. John. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. You know what I mean. I, I can't. Billy Whitehurst. Right. Oh, there's Billy Whitehurst, but he's after Billy Whitehurst. But he's on. He's on. Oh, that John Parkin. John Parkin, yeah. How did I get that wrong? John Parkin. John Parkin. Yeah, I think he's on he's on that sort of mould. He, he's a player. He can certainly play, and he knows where the goal is, and he's got a hell of a shot on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and to beat and to beat Mike Emery three times, you've got to be decent. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think it, it won't be strong in the park. I know they've started form guide. Uh, they lost their opener to Frickley at home one nil. They lost to Quan at home in the FA Cup one nil. They lost to Winterton at home 4-1, but they beat Naresborough on Tuesday night away 2-0. So their home form's not very good, mm-hmm. but their away form, obviously they only played one and they won 2-0 at Naresborough. I think Naresborough is struggling at the moment. Um, yeah. So really struggling. I don't know what's the matter with Naresborough. They generally do pick up a bit after Christmas. So the home form going into it isn't very good on paper, but as we all know, Football's not played on paper; it's played on grass. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So the, it, the, you've not, and <clears throat> I think you went to the game last season again. I missed it at Malby for some strange, odious reason. Um, but there was a controversial penalty, wasn't there? Oh, is that one of the, an absolutely appalling referee performance? Yeah, and, we, and that yeah. the, the poor decision for the penalty was the final nail in the coffin. Just wrapped it up, really. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, I think somebody got one of the managers got sent off, and uh, I'm surprised they both didn't really because obviously that. Problem. And the referee, if if uh, if I remember rightly, uh, he, he he wasn't a young lad; he was an older, experienced was. referee, yeah. and uh, he's, he's probably had like some players have. He's probably had a mare. so I don't know yeah. what I don't know what was up there. So what was did they lose or was it a draw? Okay. Oh, it must have been a draw. I think it was a draw. It was a draw, yeah. yes. Because they didn't lose until they played Mansfield, did they? That's After right. that amazing sort of 17 or 18 games unbeaten. Um, yeah. So you would you would hope you would hope they would go there and maybe do a professional job. But again, it's down to so many. There's so many um, different things that can go wrong. I mean, you might get a bad decision against you at this level. Um, you might not. Some some players might just not turn up and have a poor game. But I'm hoping after uh, Tuesday night they'll have a good game. The lads, they are certainly playing really well. Yeah, I, they I are. Yeah, really well. It, every play, you cannot say one plays better than another because they're all playing really, really well. I mean, 
it's awful to name anybody really because it, 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 you know they are playing really really well as a team and they're fitting in well and the, the new lads that have come on they look really good and it's nice to get players back who we've not seen such as uh, Mitchell Levi Lewis I mean he was yeah. the find I think last season uh, he he was on holiday, Richard, I found out. He was another one on the Burnley Park night. He was on holiday. So he's oh, come nice. back come back refreshed. He looked good on his he, he came on second half, didn't he? And he looked he looked like he'd never been away. He looked really good. Yeah, he did. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, yes. well we hope for another three points, but a point would be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Anything anything there. I mean <clears throat> the um is it um I think the is it the FA Cup again this weekend as well. Um, I think it is, isn't it? I think that's because there's a there's a few teams in the next the next qualifying round, so you never know. I mean, Barton are third. I don't think they could. Can they go up any higher if they win at this moment in time? I think they might go up to second. You don't know, but third is a very healthy position to be in, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're all firing on all cylinders. Uh, and then they've got a bit of a break, haven't they, Richard, after that, after the um, game on the 20th? Long break, isn't it? Yeah. Is yeah, it the FA Vars? I, I think it's the FA Vars. Uh, I think it's the FA Vars weekend of the 27th. So, Barton obviously uh, had a really good run in that last last season, didn't they? Came unstuck uh, against a really good North Shields game and probably what was one of the best games of the season, end-to-end stuff, wasn't it? Certainly uh, was, yeah. yeah it really, was. really good on a on a on a on a tough, tricky pitch at Bart because it was quite wet. Um, but uh, as I say, the, the the joys of having a good cup run is you don't go into the FA Vars as early as some of the other teams. So I think we get a bye and then we get into the next round. So I don't think we're in the qualifying round there. So I think the next game is the. The thirtieth or the thirty-first against uh, Garforth Town at home. Another difficult game. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, Garforth were just on the end of the wrong, wrong score last night at Winter, and a last-minute goal uh, converted by uh, Paul Grimes. So Winter and beat uh, Garforth three-two. So Winter have just started to uh, hit form again after yeah. that sticky start. I mean that sticky start at uh, Eccles Hill. So, but I've just just yeah. had a quick look at the uh, league table, and uh, with Ferriby and Penniston playing in the cup, if Barton do win on Saturday, they will go top of the table. The top of the table. Well, that's something to go for, isn't it? it certainly I don't think is. I've, I don't think I've seen Barton at top of the table for a very very long time, very long time. So that would be great if we could. And go and then go into the go into the bit of a break and then uh, play Garforth. That's always a good game against Garforth, isn't it? To yeah, Richard? be a good one. Tough fixture. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's no there's no easy ones in this league. No, there isn't. Um, no, there isn't. I mean, like we've we've intimated on a few occasions that there's no there's no givens in this league. I mean, last season, Athersley they hardly won a game, but by Christ, they give Barton a game. They at, at Barton's place, was it? Was, I think it was another draw. Oh, well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was away for that game, watching uh, watching uh, continental football. It was uh, <laughs> Sterling Albion, uh, Sterling uh, University versus um, uh, East Stirlingshire in the <laughs> Lowland League. Uh, so, oh dear me, East Stirlingshire won two 0 Yeah, what a what a game. The highlight of the game was uh, as uh, the food. <laughs> 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 a bit of haggis pie very nice right we'll uh, we'll hope for three points on Saturday we certainly will up the swans for the latest Barton Town news and information visit the club's website at www.bartontownfc.co.uk the Hull City ladies are going to be playing the matches at the Easy Buy Stadium this season I'm, and I'm joined by their manager Chris Hames um, there's probably quite a few people who don't know a lot about the um, the ladies' game in the area. What level do Hull play at, and what sort of teams will you be playing against? Yes, yeah, so we play in the uh, women's national league, um, and we're in the Northern Division One, so that's Tier Four um, of of the the women's pyramid. 
it, you know, the growing the way that the game's growing. Um, but the sort of teams in our league include teams like Leeds United, Newcastle United. Um, we've then got cl- independent clubs as well, like Barnsley um, and Chorley, um, as well as then a few others that sort of dot around uh, in the league with some sort of prestigious names to them, like you know Bradford City and and, and the like. So um, a really good good competitive league. It sounds sort of similar to sort of like the Conference North area in the men's game. Is that uh, a, fa- a fair comparison? Uh, yeah, I think it, it's hard to, to compare across the two. Um, obviously, things look a little bit different in the, in the pyramid. But yeah, um, I, I think it's the idea of, you know, the National League is the, um, you know, the, the, the top level of the, the non-league part of the mm. structure. Um, if that's if that's how we want to look across, absolutely. So, are your play do your, do your players get paid, or are they all amateurs? Um, so yeah, we're it, the, the league itself is sort of predominantly an, an amateur or sort of semi-professional league. You know, it's expenses based. Um, it's yeah, top two tiers is is where the sort of contracted players tend to come in. Yeah. And no doubt on the back of uh, the England women's success in the Euros, hopefully that's going to be give a big kick to the uh, women's game and you get a few people down to watch. I think that's the plan. Uh, the game's growing year on year anyway. Um, I'm sure what, what happened in the summer will, will hopefully um, accelerate things a little bit. Uh, but it's it's just a huge part of the, the way that the game's going anyway mm. to get you know more and more families down and you know, better, bigger and, and sort of more uh, passionate sort of fan bases that, that turn up regularly week in, week out. And what's sort of the playing background of most of your players? So uh, quite a lot of our squad have, have been at Hull for a, a number of years um, or throughout most of their sort of playing career. You know, Hull itself worked its way up the leagues um, up until last season was competing in tier three um, did suffer relegation last year which is what's led to me um, and, and changing staff coming in um, but yeah the, the, the group themselves we've got a number of players in this in this squad who've, who've played at tier two um, or sort of top end of tier three as well and then challenged themselves some who've gone through sort of England pathways as well um, at younger ages And, and um, just about sort of like the um, the sort of attend uh, for spectators. What's how much? What sort of time is kickoffs, and uh, how much does it cost to get in? So kickoff is two o'clock every Sunday. Um, one of the really good things about our league is there's that consistency at least. Um, and for us, it's a five pound entry uh, at Barton, and then you know if if you're following us for for various games, you know if other teams um, that we might be playing, obviously there's very a mix up, but it tends to be around that sort of five pound mark. Right. And and what's the f- and when's the first game and who who is it against? So our first games this Sunday we're away at Leeds United, so nice uh, sort of Yorkshire clash to to start with, uh, and then our first at home is actually the week later, um, the twenty eighth we play against Norton and Stockton, um, mm-hmm. And then follow that up quite quickly with a, a game against York City, uh, which is a midweek game, again, at, at the Easy Bank. So, given that you've just come down, are you one of the favourites to go back up, do you think? I think the expectation's always there. We, wanna, we want to compete um, and we want to um, you know, give a good account of ourselves. It's, again, a very, very tough league here. We've got some really big clubs uh, with a lot of backing behind them. Newcastle, obviously, we know what's going on at at that club um, and their women's sections been brought on board with that, you know, Leeds United themselves, um, a big club and, you know, a lot of ambition in what they do, but yeah, we want to be there or thereabouts at the end of the season. Definitely. And how does it work from your point of view with Hull City? How sort of closely aligned are you to the uh, set up at Hull? So we're a completely separate club, um, independent club at the moment. There's been, I believe a lot of discussion in the last couple of years um, to try and pull things together a little bit closer and obviously represent the city as, as one um, and particularly since the the takeover I believe there's a there's a real interest in that side but how and, and what that looks like obviously things don't necessarily change overnight so hopefully mm-hmm. um, soon enough we will see 
something um, one way or another. So do you play in the same colours as uh, Hull City men? We do, yes. Yeah, so it was continuing that identity of the city, um, you know, everything about the culture of, of, um, of Hull, you know, is very much reflected on our side. And um, yeah, uh, hopefully at some point we can, um, you know, like I said, pull together and, and it will be, all be on the same same path. And what is it that's made you come to uh, Barton for home games? It's a beautiful facility. Um, you know, I know the club's bounced around a couple of different grounds in the last few years, you know, trying to find the right formula because it's not just about the playing surface. It's about the, the stuff that you can do off the pitch as well, the, the accessibility, the um, ability to park. For us, um, Barton ticked every single box. Okay, it's slightly outside of Hull, but it, it such a fantastic facility. One of the, if not the most beautiful playing surface probably in this league now, and, and that's really important to us. So the standards that we want to set ourselves are then reflected on the pitch. Um, and it's nice to be around a club and, and a set of people at Barton who really take pride in in what they've got to offer and their facility. So yeah, we've um, we've absolutely loved it so far during pre season and looking forward to making it a home throughout the season. And sort of like teams like Leeds and uh, Newcastle, which what sort of grounds are you playing on when you play play them? So Leeds this weekend, we're up to Tadcaster Albion's ground, um, right, which yeah. again, nice ground, nice uh, facility from there. Um, Newcastle, um, I believe they've they've just recently moved, so I'm not not hundred percent sure where their ground, but again, some similar similar um, setup from that, and that's their main grounds. Obviously, a lot of these clubs do eventually do one or or a couple of games at their men's main ground as well. So mm. um, I know Newcastle got twenty two thousand at theirs last year. So fingers <laughs> crossed, we might we, we might get called into a game at St James's Park or something. So. Yeah. So what what do you hope for attendance wise at Barton? We want to be really ambitious. I think um, when you look at where the league is at um, and the league averages, I think this club tended to average above that anyway. You know, we would like a couple of hundred, a good few hundred over the next twelve months, and a lot of them to be regular returners. Um, because again, we we really believe that in the next five years, the way that the women's game is going to grow, um, we want to be able to have that base and, and that continue to grow year on year. And what, where's the best, what's the best place for people to keep in, in touch with sort of your matches and results and that sort of thing? Presume, is it a website? Is that the... Uh, yeah, the and for, for us mostly and any through any of our socials, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, the, the club behind the scenes are absolutely fantastic at making sure that that is up to date and, and regular and, and relevant content. Um, but yeah, there's Hull City Ladies website as well, um, which again is is really nicely run and, and kept together. Um, and with us being National League as well, our results are always accessible for any of the FA channels and, and any of the usual sort of results and tables that way as well. It might be an unfair question, but have you got any any players that you'd mentioned that people should look out for? Look, the, I don't like to sing like individuals, um, yeah. but they're, they're absolutely fantastic group. I think person I'd like to give a, a shout out to though um, on this is is our captain um, Ellie Tanza. You know the everything that she gives and, and drives for this club on and off the pitch. Um, the way that in what was a tough year last year for the team, um, she's managed to keep everyone's spirits high and, and actually made it an environment that is so um, passionate and. and uh, committed and driven to, to having a good year this year, which has kickstarted us really well. Um, so whilst there's plenty of players in this team with a lot of talent and a lot about them, you know, I think it's fair that we do give um, Tanza a, a you know a really big shout out, and you know she's someone I'm sure fans or new potential fans would absolutely fall in love with watching and, and supporting her. For the latest Barton Town news and information, visit the club's website at www.bartontownfc.co.uk. That's it for this edition of Swans Talk. Thanks for listening.